My friend Gwen recently entrusted me to put a decorative paint finish on this trunk that her mother built. Our mother passed away far too early at the age of 40, and Gwen has kept it all these years. I really feel honored. My first thought was to put some feet on it to make it a little more delicate and just touching up after a cleaning um, some little areas that had paint on them that uh, needed sanded. But while I was thinking, some conversations that I had with Gwen, she loves florals and she loves vines. So those are a couple things that we know that will be part of the uh, design. And also she, her room is like a pale yellow and white. So I pulled these colors and that's kind of my palette. Right now I'm just kind of in the, you know, gathering stage, not quite sure. These are some vines that I had pulled from uh, my stamp collection of Iron Orchid designs. So I am looking at those and I'm also, uh, looking at this transfer set and I love this one this one's called Elysium and it was in the spring release I love IOD transfers because they are not all rolled up in a tube they're nice in this tablet and you can just pull off the sheets that you want to use this set is designed that you can put it all in one big you know, image on the front of a dresser, but it also comes in these quarter pieces. So you can kind of manipulate it however you want. So I'm just right now looking and thinking how I might want to do it. Um, so that's the fun part, the design for me, as well as the execution. There are some examples on the back of the package that show you how you might want to arrange those transfers. I'm also considering using some molds on there. Um, not new, but new to me uh, is the sunflower mold. I'm kind of gathering my stock gradually so until I get everything that they uh, carry. but. I thought, well, it's definitely approaching sunflower season. So I start with the top of the trunk and I just paint it with a color called sawmill gravy. I like this white because it's not totally bright, stark white. Um, it's just a cool color and it's a go-to of mine. I pull the color down onto the front of the trunk and then I just do a little bit and then I'm planning on blending into uh, Dixie Belle's Daisy, which is the next color that I've chosen. I'm trying to work rather quickly and I keep my paint wet. I'm using a mister bottle to re-wet that line to reactivate the paint a little bit. And I'm also going to use the same brush and I'm just misting the brush and then I'm going to use the daisy paint. This is my first coat so it doesn't have to be perfect but I'm just bringing that paint up to the line and then we'll do a little bit of a blend. I'm going to call this a beginner's blend. 
because nothing could be easier. If you want to learn blending, but you're afraid, start with two colors that are very close in the same family. It'll be so much easier. So that's my recommendation. And use the same brush. It's just much easier to, to blend those two colors together. Then when you get a little more confident, you can start blending colors that are a little bit farther apart and use separate brushes and a neutral blending brush. So we've done that before on the channel and there's lots of people who do that. Um, but this technique to me is one that's really good to get your feet wet if you're just uh, wanting to learn and don't know where to begin. So start with two colors that are very similar and easy to blend and you'll see results very quickly and easily. It's time for my second coat, and I start on the front of the trunk this time. I go over the same line, but I decide that I want my white to come down a little bit farther than I did before. But I repeat the same process. I wet that line again and wet my brush and dip it into the yellow paint and go from there. So I just put a line that doesn't exactly meet the white one, but I finish the entire line and while the paint is wet, then I come back with a light hand and just kind of blend that. And then my battery died. <laughs> so it's the same process as I did before. And I have plenty of uh, videos on blending for your reference. But feel free to ask any questions. So now I am working on applying that transfer. So I take two of the quarters and I decide we're going to go front and center on the top of the piece that's all painted out in just the sawmill gravy color. So it's easy to line up because there's grid lines on the transfer and also I use the hinge in the center as a guideline and the front of the trunk as the bottom. You've seen people apply transfers before so we just speed through that but basically you're just burnishing the transfer onto the piece. matching it up and I love that it doesn't have a strict line to match up. It kind of overlaps a little bit so that if you chose to use this quarter by itself the edge is sort of a live edge if you will and it won't look like a straight line. So I hope that made sense. 
but it's just kind of um, wiggly line or it just outlines the flower so it can stand on its own. So that's where I left it. Now it's time for some stamping. I'm using stone gray and this is a brand new stamp pad. So I am putting the ink on generously and using the tip to kind of work in the little puddles. I forgot you should shake it first. So I took the cap off to shake it, but I think we're all good there. Um, but yeah, so you ink the pad, and I like to blot it a little bit when it's brand new, just because I don't want any extra ink that's just going to make a mess. So I just want to make sure that I get extra ink off. This also gives you an opportunity to see where you might have missed a little bit. But then you just ink your stamp, and we're going to take it to the back of the piece. And I'm gonna do a little part in the middle and then I'm just gonna make a bunch of swags the whole way across. I love this color. So I have a girl in my classes that is very neutral tone on tone. Uh, Catherine, if you're watching, you're, you're who I'm talking about. And you are the one that turned me on to the, using this color and I absolutely love it. There are gray tones in the floral, so I think this is absolutely just perfect. And gray always looks good with yellow and white as well. So win-win here. I love it. So now I have a stamp that's kind of wavy. Um, Gwen specified that she loves vines, so we're indulging that here. And of course, she said she loves florals of all sorts. Now I want to use the rest of that transfer and I'm going to take those pieces and I'm going to put them on the corners of the sides of the piece. The grid lines come in handy here because I sort of fold it together on the right side and just get an idea where the middle is and then find that line so I can use that line I follow it down and I can use that line right on that corner so I know exactly where to place it. I like the way the design looks on the sides of the piece because it has the natural outlines of the leaves, but on the front it looks a little too linear to me. So I'm grabbing another transfer called Painterly Florals and I'm using the lavender to go across in between the two sections of the other transfer. I 
and I use another sheet, but I decide that I'm going to cut it in sort of a strategic place so that I'm not cutting through any of those images if I want to use them on a, a different piece. So I'm kind of taking it from the other side. Because it can overlap that other edge a little bit, but I want to keep it sort of consistent across the front. One of the other flowers that Gwen said she liked was sunflowers. When she emailed me to tell me what all um, she kind of thought her thoughts were on the trunk, um, that was the first thing, fl first flower that she said she liked, sunflowers. So I knew I had to include some sunflowers. So I kind of strategically placed them so they're kind of arched a little bit in towards the center. I love these types of transfers. It's great to work with a set that's already kind of like a bouquet or arranged flowers, but it's also nice to do the arranging yourself. looking good but I still want to do a little bit more towards the bottom so I use a few more sunflowers and a few more leaves and finish it up. As I mentioned earlier I had considered the sunflower mold but I still feel at this point that using the transfers and keeping it a little more uniform is more effective. Plus with it being a trunk kind of sitting close to the ground. I didn't want to risk it getting kicked or uh, hit with a vacuum cleaner or something um, being a little more delicate. So I think this is the better option. A little more stamping to do along the bottom. I use a 220 grit sanding pad and go over all of my transfers. This really helps the transfers to not have a halo around the edge and to look like they are more painted on the piece. After that, I use a finishing pad, which is kind of a really, really super fine sandpaper. Next, I use clear wax. I'm going to wax the entire piece to seal in everything. I seal in the transfers this way and seal the paint on the wood and just give everything a protective coating. There was a few little odds and ends in my wax, so I had to pick them out. <laughs> I'm using the Best Dang brush from Dixie Bell and it's an awesome brush for using clear wax when you're going all over the piece because it's a great big brush and it covers a lot of territory. Next, I'm gonna use Dixie Belle's Grunge Gray Wax and a much smaller stencil brush. And I'm going to go in all of the crevices and cracks and just put a nice aged finish on here. So it's great to use 
clear wax underneath your colored wax because now I'm going to take the same rag that I used to wipe back my clear wax and then I can wipe back the grunge gray and then that just softens it and it allows me to remove in areas where I feel like maybe I got a little too much. After all, this piece is very dainty and delicate, so we don't want harsh wax. I go over the hinges because I feel like they were such an important part of this piece. I could have replaced the hinges with maybe a piano hinge that you didn't really see that much, but I just love this trunk the way it is. And I have to tell you that, again, I, I feel like it was such an honor to be entrusted with this job. Um, it just, as I painted it, I just felt a connection. That's that's all I can say about it, but um, I think maybe because Gwen's mom made it herself and I do what I do, I think that I just felt a very strong connection there. So the, the more I worked on the piece, the, the more important it was for me to preserve every detail that I could um, that showcased her handiwork. We're getting down to the finishing touches. Because I painted the piece with the lid closed, I now have it open and I'm just touching up the areas on the inside to give it a more finished look. I had considered putting hemp seed oil on the inside to refresh the wood, but then I decided that it was probably better to leave it as is, untouched, because I know it's special to me to touch things that I know my parents touched. I don't know, it might be weird, but I just felt like it was important to just preserve that part of it as, as is. That being said, I couldn't resist. Now I stamped, I had this large stamp and I used the smoke or the gray um, ink on it but a happy accident occurred. I had used it previously with a different kind of ink and the color stayed on there and I guess that it transferred and to me that it just was meant to be. I just wanted that little touch on the inside and I love how it turned out. I'll be spray sealing it to make sure that that ink doesn't transfer anymore. I'm now drilling holes and putting the dowel screws in the bottoms of them so that I can screw them into the bottom of the trunk. I take the bit out of my drill and I replace it with the dowel pin to drive it into the hole in the foot. I use the daisy paint and put two coats of paint on the feet. I have this box that solar lights came in and I kept it because I knew it would be perfect for occasions such as this. Remember this beautiful chest before? Take a look now. Thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. 
Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Visit us at LaVintageDecor.company. On Instagram, we're LaVintageDecor. And on Facebook, we're LaVintageDecor Altoona. Stay well.